Hello mga students, welcome back sa channel natin ano? For this video lecture, and this is a short video lecture, pag-usapan natin yung accumulation and allocation of overhead costs. Okay? So, more of conceptual po tayo dito, no? We will be dealing with the theoretical part of the topic and later on na sa ating mga computation. Para bago tayo mag-proceed sa computation, naiintindihan ninyo bakit natin ito ginagawa. When we are talking here of accumulation and allocation of overhead costs, if we have a certain XXX amount, no? Okay? Wala po tayong specific na amount dito, ano? Suffice it na XXX lang. But this represents your costs. Okay? Papaano ba natin ito i-allocate? Papaano ba natin i-distribute? So here, we are talking of cost allocation. Okay? O, cost allocation. Bakit ba natin ito kinakailangan i-allocate? When we are talking of allocation kasi, no? We are distributing the costs. And normally, we are distributing the cost here for different cost objects. For, for cost accounting purposes, no? Itong ating cost allocation ay dinidistribute natin sa cost objects. When we are talking here of cost objects, this is anything, kahit ano-ano, na gusto ng management na mag-collecta or mag-accumulate ng mga costs for for decision making for proper you know, for proper planning controlling or decision making purposes so later on po sa cost accounting subject or sa mga topics na makukover ng cost accounting okay marami po tayong may encounter ano na iba't ibang klase ng mga cost objects basta tandaan mo na ninyo sa ngayon this is anything no that a management may want to collect or accumulate costs okay cost objects so kumbaga Kung ito yung halaga ng aking mga gastos, paano ko ba ito i-distribute sa mga iba't ibang mga cost objects? O tandaan po ninyo, ano, sa side ng financial accounting, let's say pag-usapan po natin yung depreciation. O in the context of manufacturing accounting, remember that a factory, uh, sabihin na natin yung mga machinery sa planta, yung depreciation no, that is an indirect cost, that is an overhead cost. So, sa financial accounting, di ba, ina-allocate natin yung cost period uh, doon sa mga panahon kung kailan ito dapat. Um, kasi, sa, uh, ganito na lang, ano, when we are talking of depreciation, this is a periodic allocation. Di ba? Instead na i-expense natin ito ng isang beses lang, eh dahil may mga machineries or may mga property and equipment tayo na napakinabangan natin multiple times, or multiple periods, dararapat lang ano, na i-distribute natin yung cost na yun, yung depreciable cost, para doon sa mga panahon kung kailan ito nagagamit. Hindi yung expense lang natin ito sa umpisa. Kasi, ano, overstated yung ating expenses sa unang taon, tapos wala na tayong allocation. So, proper allocation is important, no? Remember, meron tayong tinatawag na matching principle. Okay? At ano nga ulit ang sinasabi ng matching principle? Dapat, no, i-match natin yung revenues and expenses. Although, we are talking of costs here, ang ating more um, emphasis dito is yung expense recognition. Okay? Expense recognition. Na yung mga gastos, dapat ini-incur natin ito sa panahon na kung kailan ito nangyari. No? Yung expenses, i-recognize natin kung kailan siya nangyari hindi kung kailan tayo magbabayad no when we are allocating costs kasi no ito uh, another term pala oh, or another principle that we want to explain to you is your cost principle sa production o oh, tandaan po ninyo ano um, sa production meron tayong tatlong klase ng inventories di ba ang mga cost kasi maaring inexpense ito or maaring inventoryable Pag sinabi natin inventoryable, hindi ito yung sinacharge sa expense sa income statement kung hindi, kinakapitalize mo na. Okay? O kung meron tayo ng uh, tawag nito, raw materials, meron tayo ng work in progress, meron tayo ng finished goods inventory, no? raw materials inventory, work in progress inventory, finished goods inventory, ito po ay mga inventoryable cost, nasa inventory account. In the context of manufacturing accounting. Now, itong finished goods, no? Siyempre, 
Uh, tandaan niyo sa isa kong video lecture, pinaliwanag ko ano yung relationship nito at yung iba't ibang mga schedules na associated dito sa iba't ibang mga inventories at yung process ng production. Now, etong finished goods, kapag nabenta na natin ito, saka lamang natin ito, charge sa expense as cost of goods sold. So, imagine ano, kung hindi natin na-allocate na ng tama, okay, maaaring nabenta na pala yan, pero nandito pa rin, okay, sa any dito sa tatlo, o kaya naman, the other way around. Okay? Nandito, uh, tawag nito, wala na sila dito, wala sa raw materials, wala sa whip, wala sa finished goods, pero dapat nandito pala. No? Ang ginawa mo kasi, inexpense mo na agad. Ginawa mo ng cost of goods sold, eh, wala pa naman. So, dapat, no, maayos ang proper allocation. But it goes more than this one. But what I want to emphasize is yung context, no, yung concept ng cost principle na dapat na-allocate natin ito ng maayos. Okay? But again, it goes more, uh, hindi lamang po dito sa ipanaliwanan ko sa inyo. Marami pa tayong pag-uusapan na cost allocation na mas maganda no, na ipaliwanag ko sa inyo sa mga susunod na video lecture when we give you a specific example. Okay? Now, tandaan lang po ninyo ano, that when we are talking of cost allocation here, meron tayong base. Okay? Ano yung base na yon? Or yung tinatawag natin na allocation base. On what manner do we have to allocate the costs? Papaanong paraan ba natin ito i-allocate? Let's say for depreciation, di ba? Hindi lang naman laging straight line method. Meron tayong sum of years digit. Units of production. What else? Double declining. O especially yung units of production. Mas magandang example yun kasi nasa manufacturing setup tayo. Ina-allocate natin yung depreciation based doon sa units produced. Okay. So, marami po tayong allocation based doon. Okay, another term here is yung cost driver or activity driver. Okay, so may encounter po ninyo ito later on. What drives the cost no? in, in cost allocation? Now, the reason why we perform cost allocation is because of three reasons. Okay, meron po tayo dito tatlong dahilan or tatlong purpose, bakit tayo nagkakandak nitong cost allocation? Number one, to determine the full cost of your cost objects. So, dapat natin ma-determine yung full cost. Kasi, halimbawa, no? meron tayong mga cost dito na kailangang i-allocate. Eh, hindi natin nagawa na ma-identify lahat magkano ba yung cost sa isang cost object na ito. Eh, baka mamaya ma maging understated yung ating expenses at na-charge natin ito sa susunod na period, sa maling period at doon naman na-apektuhan yung kanyang income statement. Especially sa financial accounting side, no? kaya na kailangan na ma-determine natin magkano yung tamang expenses. Okay. Oh, again, yung matching principle. Otherwise, oh, tanda, simple lang kasi ito. Revenue less expenses it is equals your net profit. Eh kung mali yung expenses mo, kulang yun. Kasi hindi natin na-determine yung buong cost. Eh di mas lalaki, lolobo yung ating net profit na hindi naman talaga dapat. So that is one reason why do we need cost allocation. Pangalawa, oh, for efficient management, no? for efficient operations or for efficient management. Lalong-lalo lalo na, no, we are talking here of the management's point of view. Yung perspective ng manager. Okay? Eh, syempre, siya yung nag-oversee. Especially when we are talking of production. Yung mga managers doon, kinakailangan aware sila sa mga cost na pumapasok at paano ba ito dinidistribute. So, for efficient management. At pangatlo, at ito ay medyo aligned, connected dito sa number 2, for planning Okay, what else? Controlling and decision making. O, lagay ko na lang DM but it stands for decision making. We perform cost allocation para later on, no? Pag nag-budget tayo, pag gumawa tayo ng forecast for planning purposes, okay, we can control the costs, no? At ma-determine natin. Okay, for syempre, we we are always 
looking on how do we make our lives or how do we make the production, the processes more efficient. So, kinakailangan din natin ito for decision making purposes. Okay? So, yan po ano, ang mga dahilan bakit natin kinakailangan na mag-allocate ng mga costs. And that is the conceptual, uh, the concepts, the theories behind cost allocation. Now, kung sakali man po na may mga questions kayo related dito sa pinag-usapan natin, huwag kayong mahiya mag-comment down below para at least ma-assist ko kayo, ano? At para makita ko na rin kung sakali man na may mga hindi kayo naiintindihan at gusto ninyo ng clarification. Until then, sa mga susunod na video lectures ko, I will see you. Bye-bye!